So today we got a Connor McDavid Be a Pro simulation. And you might be wondering what is a Be a Pro simulation? So basically for the next four seasons, I can only play games. I can choose which games I play, but I can only play games and do nothing else. In the postseason, I'm only allowed to jump into two games per series. In years four through eight, I'm allowed one free agent signing and I'm allowed to make two trades. And then after year eight, I'm allowed to do whatever I want. I can make as many free agent signings as I want. I can do as many trades as I want. I can start drafting players for this team and I can control any staff hirings and firings. And then once Connor McDavid drops below a 90 overall, the CPU is going to take control for the rest of his career. And since it's the first video of this brand new series, I want to set a like goal. Can we get 2,000 likes? Also, if you're a new or returning viewer to the channel and you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. So things aren't off to a great start in the first season, because here we are, missing the playoffs. That makes a lot of sense. Edmonton is going to finish with a 38, 36, and 8 record, 7th in the Pacific Division, and 24th in the entire league. You realize we still have Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl on this team, right? Like, there's no reason we should be missing the postseason. McDavid still had himself a solid season picking up 49 goals and 67 assists for 116 points. Stuart Skinner took over a net this season but his numbers were not great whatsoever. An 893 save percentage and a 342 goals against. But you know what makes it even worse? His numbers were still better than Jack Campbell's. Bro had a 3-12 and record with an 891 and a 360. Nah that's a tough look not gonna lie. Also shout out to Sergei Bobrovsky he's back in his prime and he led all goaltenders and wins with 40. I mean he was tied with Jake Ottinger but we're gonna give it to the bobber. When the season came to an end it looks like Vegas is gonna try to keep things a bit realistic as they're gonna be taking home the Stanley Cup. But they did beat the Columbus Blue Jackets, so I think that completely voids this season. Also, shout out to Johnny Hockey. 34 points in 22 postseason games. Yeah, let's just move on to next season because year one's not making any sense. Before we get to the end of year one, a bit more disappointment because our first round picks going to the Nashville Predators. That's a great sign for what's to come in this video. Over the offseason, this team didn't have any cap space to make any moves, so our depth is even worse. We literally have seven good forwards. Nah, this team might be cooked. But in case this team is potentially cooked, I'm simulating until the start of April, and if I have to jump into some of these games to make the playoffs, I will. Luckily, I'm not having to jump into any games, as Edmonton's going to be finishing 4th in the Pacific Division with a 44-32-6 and six record, and we're also 14th in the entire league. It's not that great, but we're in the postseason, so I'll take it. Connor McDavid had a bit of a slow reader, only picking up 109 points, while Jack Campbell, he's going to be sharing the net with Stuart Skinner this season, and neither of these guys put up great numbers once again. A 901 with a 331, while Stuart Skinner's picking up a 900 with a 328. The second I'm allowed to make any free agent signings or make any trades, I'm going to bring in a goaltender. That's the first thing I'm doing. And shout out to Sidney Crosby at 36 years old. He's picking up 111 points. You do you, my guy. In the first round, the Edmonton Oilers are going to have their hands full as they have to take on the Colorado Avalanche. So right now, things aren't looking good for the Edmonton Oilers. There's 14 minutes left in the third period and we're already down 3-2 in the series. But thankfully, I'm taking over because halfway through the third period, Darnell Nurse is going to work. He's going to be picking up the puck behind the net off a rebound and then I don't know what Gorgiev's doing here. Bro was absolutely lost. Like, I can't even explain what happened like dude what are you doing i'm just skating behind the net here you go for the poke check and you get yourself stuck outside the net it's a goal it's a cheap goal but i'll take it and moments later i'm going right back to work driving towards the front of the net i'm going for the one timer here but gorgiev's gonna make the stop eventually mcdavid's scoring but it's gonna be called back saying it's goaltender interference i want you guys to remember this exact play right here this was called as goaltender interference i need you to remember this because this is gonna be very crucial later in the video and things are gonna go from bad to worse for edmonton because we're still in the power play but colorado is gonna make a run here a one timer is going to be saved by Stuart Skinner, but somehow the puck's going to deflect right to a Colorado forward. He's putting this in the back of the net, and we're down 5-2, to two, so I think it's safe to say this game's over. But maybe it isn't, because I'm going to make one last push. A nice spin move here is going to set up Yamamoto on the doorstep, but it's going to ring off the post, and he's not going to put the puck into the back of the net. He's going to skate past the net, and I'm not going to lie, that's a tough look. But even with my elite play style, because we know I'm just one of the greatest NHL 23 players of all time, this is sarcasm, by the way. We're not going to be able to get back into this game. We're falling 5-2. to two. After eliminating the Edmonton Oilers, the Colorado Avalanche would go on a run, making it all the way to the Stanley Cup Final, and they're going to be taking down the Columbus Blue Jackets in five games. So Columbus has now made it to back-to-back -back Stanley Cup Finals, and they've fallen both times. Very interesting. McDavid wasn't his usual self in the postseason, only picking up three goals and four assists for seven points in six games. I'm more used to you picking up three points per game in the postseason, so I'm going to need a bit more production out of you. And once again, Johnny Hockey's going to be leading all postseason scores while not winning the Stanley Cup. You have bad luck my guy nothing else to say about that one over the offseason looks like the Edmonton Oilers are going to bring in some pieces to help their forward depth they're going to be bringing Tanner Pearson in on a two-year deal worth 2.4 million per year and Ross Colton on a two-year deal worth 2.1 million not really too sure how I feel about these signings but based on what we have on our forward depth right now I'll take it because anything's going to help this team also I just want to mention Justin Hall's on the second year of his three-year deal so if you're wondering what he did last season absolutely nothing he's been a healthy scratch the past two seasons we literally signed this dude to be a healthy scratch he hasn't played a minute 
so far. But don't worry because we're paying him about 2.5 million instead of bringing in more forward depth. Okay, so we're in the final two games of the season and there's a chance that we don't make the playoffs here. So I'm gonna have to jump into these games. We have the Nashville Predators left and the Chicago Blackhawks. Nashville, I'm not gonna have to worry about. We're gonna smoke them, taking them down six to one. Chicago, on the other hand, somehow this team is putting up a fight against us. It's 2-2 with five minutes left in the third period. So I gotta jump into this one. And in the final minute 30, thankfully our goaltending is gonna stand on its head. A routine shot's gonna go towards Stuart Skinner. Somehow he's gonna let that pass him. Cody Cece's almost gonna put this in the back of the net. Yeah, that could have been a disaster. But luckily we're gonna be able to hold off the Chicago Blackhawks and we're headed to overtime. And off the ensuing face off in overtime, it's time for Leon Drysaw to go to work. A nice little spin moves, getting past the defender. He's gonna do a toe drag here, back of the net. Edmonton's taking this one home and we're making the postseason. But it doesn't really look like I need to jump into these games because we're finishing fourth in the Pacific Division with a 39, 37, and six record, four points ahead of the Anaheim Ducks. And we're also finishing 19th in the entire league. So we were an incredibly bad team, but still made the playoffs. I'll take any postseason appearance we can get, but honestly, this is ridiculous at this point. Like this is actually just stupid. Can the CPU not build a team? In year three, things aren't looking great for McDavid as he's dropping to second on the team in scoring and he's picking up 105 points, 47 goals and 58 assists. I got nothing to say about that. Nothing at all. But I gotta give a bit of praise to Dylan Holloway as he's picking up 70 points. All right, Soupy, we have to have a discussion here. I don't care about the wins and I don't care about the losses. An 861 and a 475. I didn't even think that would be possible. You played 12 games and had a 475. You were almost allowing five goals a game. I do not care how bad the defense was. A 475. I'm speechless. Okay, so after looking at those goaltending numbers, we have to take on Colorado again. There's not a chance we beat this team, but we could make a statement in game one because we're tied 2-2 after 60 minutes and it's time for me to jump in and score this game winner. But thankfully, I'm bringing out the high IQ moves. I'm gonna try to make a breakout pass here, turn it over, Colorado's gonna go down one timer into the back of the net and we lose in game one. There's that high IQ for you. And it looks like the overtime goal is gonna give Colorado all the momentum because here we are in game four, down 3-0 in the series and we're down 4-2 in the game. Yeah, that's a tough look. But I refuse to let the Edmonton Oilers lose four to two. So I'm gonna allow Nathan McKinn to score a goal here and we're losing five to two. Oh, you thought I was gonna make a bit of a comeback? No, nah, Colorado's gonna cook this team. And after being Edmonton, what a surprise, Colorado's gonna go on a roll once again this season, all the way to the Stanley Cup final, but this time the Buffalo Sabres are gonna be coming out on top in a five game series. Okay, so not only did McDavid average less than a point a game in the postseason, Tanner Peterson was our second leading scorer with two points. We never had a chance, did we? Also, St. Louis Blues legend Tage Thompson's leading all postseason scores with 35 points. The trade was worth it. We won a Stanley Cup with Ryan O'Reilly. I will never think differently on that. We're officially in year four and next season I can start making moves for this team. And I'm going to be making a bunch of moves because the CPU has literally done nothing in the past four years to make this team any better, which I don't understand. Like, sign somebody. But guys, don't worry. We did make one move. I'm sorry. I completely ignored this one. Justin Hall has officially reached the lineup in year three of his contract. We just paid this man $5 million over the past two seasons to not play a second for this team. But in year three, when he's 33 years old, it's time for him to take over. So we weren't good by any means, but we're making the playoffs once again, second in the Pacific Division with a 41, 33, and eight record. We're 14th in the entire league. Although this team's doing absolutely nothing to improve, I'll take a postseason appearance. 14th in the entire league isn't good by any means, but I'll take it. I won't take this though. 92 points from Connor McDavid the greatest player in the league right now. I can't express my disappointment in words. So normally I would rip on the Vancouver Canucks saying there's absolutely no chance they beat the Edmonton Oilers, but then I remember the moves Edmonton made over the past four years. Literally none. And I'm assuming Vancouver has done something, so this isn't going to be an easy matchup for us. And who would have seen this one coming? Down 3-2 in the first round, 17 minutes left in the third period. I'm taking over. I'm going to do whatever I have to to get this team out of the first round, because at this point, it's beyond ridiculous. So of course, right when I jump in, things are just going to go absolutely fantastic. Yamamoto's gonna do a great job body checking Hironic here. Like, I just gotta give him all the props in the world. The puck's gonna work its way over to Kuzmenko in the slot. Stuart Skinner's gonna go post to post for some reason. Kuzmenko's gonna have a wide open net, and Vancouver's up 3 nothing. But I am sick and tired of Edmonton losing in the first round, so I'm doing whatever's necessary to score a goal. And that includes doing these greasy wraparound goals that are basically guaranteed to go in every single time. McDavid's getting Edmonton on the board, and he's making this a two goal game. Yamamoto, I want you to take a few class from Evan Bouchard, because that's how you hit somebody. Bouchard rock that dude. Moments after that, big hit from Bouchard. It's time to get the playbook out. And who is going to be the hero here? Although McDavid is scoring the goal, you know who threw that puck on net? Justin Hall. Maybe he was the missing piece all along. And I'm just going to keep on pushing with the Edmonton Oilers. A nice move from Nugent Hopkins is going to give him a great opportunity, but Thatcher Demko is making a huge save to keep this a one goal game. The Oilers keep on pushing and Carmack McDavid's is going to have a fantastic chance to tie this game up for the hat trick, but Thatcher Demko is sliding across. But honestly, McDavid's got to get that shot off way quicker. I flicked the right stick up. He just decided not to deflect this into the net and he wanted to go for a wrist shot. But eventually we would 
would be able to find the back of the net. And it's going to be a very unlikely hero because I did not even know this guy was on our team. Jacob Middleton. I don't know when we acquired him. I have no clue if we ever signed him, but he is somehow on this team and he just tied this game up. And if you thought the Edmonton Oilers were done there, the two guys I thought might have been bad signings for us are coming up clutch. Tanner Pearson and Ross Colton with 20 seconds left in the game. They're giving Edmonton the lead and Edmonton's cruising to a 4-3 victory. Stuart Skinner is going to be making some good saves in the final seconds, but we just came back and won that game. And we're going to keep on rolling after that. We're going to end up winning this series in seven games and we finally reach the second round. And in the second round, we're going to be taking on a young team in the Anaheim Ducks. It's not going to take long before I need to step in as we're going to overtime in game number one. So you already know I'm going to be the guy scoring the OT winner. Halfway to overtime, Dylan Holloway has a fantastic chance to be our hero. He's going to do a nice spin move here, game past three defenders. He's able to get a backhander off, but it's going to be going off the stick of John Gibson. And he's keeping this game all tied up, but it's not going to be tied up for too much longer because who's going to be scoring the game one overtime winner? That's none other than Ross Colton. And who's giving him the assist? Well, that's Tanner Pearson. The two greatest pickups in Edmonton Oilers franchise history. Eventually, the Oilers are going to be heading into another overtime game, and that's going to be in game three as we're tied three to three. But I do want to point out the three goals that Edmonton has scored. Two of them have come from Ross Colton and the others come from Tanner Pearson. These guys need their jerseys retired with Edmonton. They're single-handedly carrying this franchise. Early into overtime, Dylan Hallway is ready to work his magic once again. A nice spin move is going to find Nugent Hopkins coming into the zone. He's going to pass it over to Nugent. He's going to one-time this into the back of the net, and Edmonton's now got themselves a 3-1 series lead. And with a 3-1 series lead, it looks like we're going to be heading back to overtime in Game 4. The only issue this time around is I can't step into this game. The CPU's got to handle it. I am very concerned to say the least. So here we are in triple overtime, and this game's been taking forever, and it's because of saves like this. John Gibson, I don't even know how you're keeping this puck out of the net. Like, to be fair, this puck was probably going wide of the net, but John Gibson's out here just making the incredible saves. I also do want to point out who would have scored that goal? Tanner Pearson. And who was assisting it? Ross Colton. And just moments after that great chance from Tanner Pearson, Evander Kane's bringing the puck into the offensive zone. He's finding a man wide open in front of the net who's going to be burying this one in the back of the net. And who's the guy scoring the overtime winner? Tanner Peterson. He's the greatest oiler of all time, and you can't change my mind about it. This dude single-handedly is saving this franchise. He is more valuable than Connor McDavid. Yeah, I just said Tanner Pearson is more valuable than Connor McDavid. Prove me wrong. So here we are in the conference finals and the Oilers just keep on completing upsets and now we have the Minnesota Wild to take down. And in the conference finals, Minnesota's not even going to be able to compete with us. We have a 3-1 series lead entering game 5 and Edmonton's just going to cruise to a 4-1 victory in this game and now we're off to the Stanley Cup final. And of the 16 teams in the Eastern Conference, who are we matching up against? The Columbus Blue Jackets. Since season number 1, Columbus has completely turned their franchise around and they're a powerhouse. The only issue is they haven't been able to win a Stanley Cup. Now, what are the odds they finally win a Stanley Cup defeating the Edmonton Oilers? I would say pretty high. After exchanging wins in Game 1 and Game 2, we're entering overtime in Game 3 with the series tied 1-1. to And in just our first minute of overtime, we're going to be able to find our winner as Johnny Hockey's going to sauce the puck over to Patrick Laine in front of the net. He's burying the OT winner, but this goal seemed kind of sus to me. And there's a reason this goal seemed kind of sus to me. Explain how Johnny Hockey's making this pass when his stick isn't even in play. It merged into the boards. I'm just going to say right now, we got screwed. After Columbus took a 2-1 series lead, the Oilers and Blue Jackets are going to exchange the next two games, so we're entering an elimination game down one with only nine minutes left in the game. But 10 minutes is more than enough time for me to go to work as Zach Hyman's going to throw a routine shot towards the net. It's taking an incredibly weird deflection over top of the goalie. It's in the back of the net and we've tied this game up at two games apiece. Now, like real talk, we're getting incredibly lucky with this goal right here, but I'll take it. And just seconds after that, Zach Hyman continues to keep on pushing. He's going to take the puck away from Renski and then he's going to slow up the pace a bit. He's going to find Leon Dreisau crash towards the net and the Edmonton Oilers now have a 3-2 lead. But the only issue we have is we left too much time on the clock as Alex Texier is going to pick up the puck. He's going to skip around the slot a little bit somehow nobody's gonna be able to get a body on this man and he's gonna tie this game up in the final minutes nah real talk we just gotta light this dude up if he's skating around like that neither team would be able to score a goal in the final 230 so that means we're headed to overtime but 12 minutes left in overtime columbus is gonna bring the puck into the offensive zone and a pass is gonna go over to kent johnson he's gonna get a shot off but he's crashing right into stuart skinner columbus is gonna be able to put this one in the back of the net but obviously this is gonna be goaltender interference right like i mean just look at this instant replay kent johnson gets the backhander off but he crashes right into stuart skinner like look at his head he is clearly affected by this collision like there's no way he's getting back into this play after being completely knocked out of position right so johnny hockey's our con smythe winner after taking us down on that goal they didn't call goaltender interference on that remember a couple seasons 
seconds ago when they called goaltender interference on me? Explain the difference here. Both goaltenders were knocked out of position, except this time it cost us the Stanley Cup. I have absolutely nothing to say about that. It's absolutely ridiculous how they're not calling goaltender interference on that. Yes, I understand it's a video game, but I'm still mad about it. McDavid, I couldn't ask anything more from you. 25 points in 23 games. Great job. Johnny Hockey. Yeah, I don't want to see your face ever again. But even with us losing the Stanley Cup, there is one positive from this season. I could finally make trades and make a free agent signing. So we're immediately going to work. So our defense is absolutely abysmal and we got to improve this. So Yamamoto, a second round pick and a prospects off to the Boston Bruins for Brett Pesci. We need a good defensive defenseman and Brett Pesci is one of the best out there. The free agent signing that I'm going to do is Carter Hart to a two year deal for 6 million. We need a goaltender and Carter Hart's still young enough. He'll improve a bit, but we just need someone right now. However, there is one issue with me signing and trading players. The CPU can still make moves. So we're going to sign Ferraro to a $5.7 million deal. He's an 83 overall at 27 years old. I just traded for Brett Pesci, who's an 87 overall, and we're paying him $5.9 million. So the CPU is going to continue to waste my money. So one of the biggest issues with the Edmonton Oilers is the lack of depth scoring. So I'm trading Jack Campbell, a prospect, and a fourth round pick over to the Montreal Canadiens for a good bottom six left winger. And that trade for depth scoring was definitely a smart move for us because we're not really bringing in any other forwards. So what did we do with the rest of our money, you might ask? We signed Philip Gustafson after I traded for Carter Hart. We just committed $6.2 million per season to Philip Gustafson to be our backup. So you're telling me the CPU thought. I see that Stick on the Ice has signed a goaltender in free agency. We should also sign a goaltender for more money to be the backup. This is why Edmonton can never succeed. And here we are in April, three games left of the season, and we're sitting outside of a playoff spot. I can guarantee you right now, we're in a playoff spot if we don't sign Philip Gustafson and use that $6 million on forward depth or defensive depth. But no, we need $12 million tied into goaltenders. So I gotta jump into at least one of these games, and it's gonna be the Vegas Golden Knights one because it's the first one. We're currently down 2-1 heading into the final five minutes. I gotta get this team at least one point out of this game because if I don't, there's no chance we make the playoffs. Thankfully, we do have some competent forwards on this team. McDavid and Hyman are gonna be fighting for the puck in the corner. Hyman's going to secure it while McDavid goes to the front of the net. It's going to be a nice one timer for McDavid to score, and he's tying this game up. And thankfully, we're not going to allow a goal in the final two minutes, so we're going to overtime and we're at least picking up one point. Just a minute into overtime, Jack Eichel's bringing the puck into the offensive zone. McDavid's going to go for a little poke check here, and he's going to poke the puck away. So I've paused the clip here because I want to go through the thought process of this game. I'm going to switch to Leon Dreisaitl, the guy in the top left corner here. What I believe should be the right move is I switch to Leon Dreisaitl, he goes for the loose puck. He'll meet up with Jack Eichel, and the best case scenario I can poke the puck away from him or I can at least tie Jack Eichel up so he's not able to get a shot off. Instead the game decides nah you want to switch to Brett Pesci so he's going to skate over to Jack Eichel leaving his man wide open in front of the net. I'm not going to have enough time to recover and Mark Stone's going to end this game. After losing that game, we're going to go on to drop the next two games and we're missing out on the playoffs with a 39, 38, and 5 record, 7th in the Pacific Division and 23rd in the entire league. But it's actually worse than you think. You know why? We allowed 14 goals in our last two games. We lost 7-3 to Anaheim and then 7-2 to Calgary. I guess the $12 million we spent on goaltending wasn't enough because neither of these guys could stop a puck. The Oilers aren't going to be the only disappointing thing because McDavid's picking up less than 100 points again this season, only 97. But that's not even the most disappointing thing. Philip Gustafson a 438 goals against bros getting paid six million dollars to let in five goals a game i mean it's not exactly five it's 4.38 but who cares i'm trading you in the off season the fact that our team wasted money on you like the cpu in this game just signs players if it has money it's like oh you have a goalie well you have six million extra dollars so why not sign another one we're making the postseason if carter hart plays a few more games we lost because the cpu signed philip gustafson so Anaheim's going to win the Stanley Cup, defeating the Toronto Maple Leafs in six games. I actually don't really care. I don't care whatsoever. Okay, we're going from zero to 100 real quick. We somehow got the second overall pick. I don't know how that's possible, but here we are. Don't screw this up. Draft us a generational prospect. We're getting Ronald Dunham here. He's an 80 overall elite sniper. He's going to hopefully be a good player for us in the future, hopefully even next season, because we have to get back to the postseason. So over the past year, I've learned something. We have to make moves in the very first day of free agency to make sure the CPU doesn't waste our cap. So Phil Gustafson, Mario Ferraro, a second round pick, and two prospects. I'm sending all that over to the Ottawa Senators for these two guys. With some of that freed up cap space, I'm going to be bringing Philip Deneau in on a one year deal worth 2.1 million and then we're making a massive move darnell nurse you're getting old at this point and you're gonna start regressing zach hyman you're on a one-year deal and i'm not gonna be able to re-sign you for next season so i'm gonna package both of you guys up along with a first round pick and board goal over to the winnipeg jets for negrin he's gonna be an elite defenseman for us we'll be able to re-sign him next off season but we gotta make some big changes to this team so thankfully the cpu didn't make any stupid signings to our forward core that doesn't mean they didn't make any stupid signs to the defense though connor murphy a two-year deal worth two million per season 
Dylan DeMello, 2.4 million per year for the next two years. Robin Solo, 3 million per year for the next two seasons. And you know what the worst part about all these signings are? All of these guys are healthy scratches for us. But wait, things get much worse. Ryan McDonough, 3.1 million per year for the next two seasons, and he's in the AHL. He's a 78 overall that we gave 3.1 million per year for the next two years, who's 38 years old. Why would you make a logical move? Like, that just doesn't make sense. A smart signing? What does that mean? Also, I'm making a new rule up on the fly. If I trade or sign a player, I'm allowed to re-sign them at any point. So Carter Hart, 7.7 .7 million per year for the next six years. I am making sure you stay with this team. I'm not letting you walk in free agency. Thankfully, all the moves I made was able to save this team as the Oilers are going to be finishing third in the Pacific Division with a 43-33-6 and six record. And we're also 14th in the entire league. I don't care where we sit. We're in the postseason and that's a W if you ask me. McDavid's stepping up the production this season and you'll love to see it. 44 goals and 62 assists for 106 points. While well, Carter Hart, the numbers are not good actually. I don't know what I was about to say. I was about to say they're actually not too bad, but they're not good by any means. But I don't really care because we're in the playoffs. Also, Robert, I'd like to take back all that disrespect I said to you. You actually did crack the lineup and weren't a healthy scratch. But there is one major issue I have. Why is Corbin in the AHL? He's our best left defenseman. So I'm gonna make an executive decision right now. Until I got to year eight, I was gonna allow the coach and all the staff manage everything. They can do the lines they want, X, Y, Z. Nah, I'm bringing this dude into the NHL because there's no reason that Broberg, Edmondson, and Solo should all be playing over him. So Corbin, I need you to step in for the postseason because I need a competent defenseman on my team. Also, Ronald, I guess, isn't playing this season for us. We're gonna have him in the minors. Yeah, because he's definitely not better than like three of our left wingers. But none of that matters. We're in the postseason. We're taking on the Anaheim Ducks. Yes, some games have already been played. Ignore that. We're focused on the Ducks right now. We currently have a 2-1 lead this series entering game four, but now we're tied 4-4 after 60 minutes, so it's time for me to score our overtime winner. And with McDavid turning on the Jets, he's going to blow by his defender. Leon Draisaitl is going to be wide open to deflect this one in the back of the net, but he's going to completely sell, fanning on the puck, and it's going into the corner, and this game's staying all tied up. And just six minutes after that, Troy Terry's bringing the puck into the offensive zone. Kapanen's going to get himself wide open. He's going to beat Carter Hart, and he's evening up this series. But in our very next game, I'm going to get another chance to score an overtime winner as we're heading right back in a 2-2 tie. And this time around in overtime, I'm not going to be selling as Rizuki's going to be wrapping around the net. John Gibson's not going to be able to go post to post fast enough. He's putting this one in the back of the net and Edmonton's taking a commanding 3-2 series lead. But of course, the Oilers aren't going to be able to close this series out in six games, so we're headed to game seven. And in game seven, Edmonton's going to be picking up back-to-back -back third period goals and we're taking the Anaheim Ducks down in seven games. Moving on to the next round, we're going to have the San Jose Sharks to take on. None of the games in this series were overly close, so I'm not having to jump into any of them, and we're going to be taking the Sharks down in six games. I can tell you right now, the Conference Finals is going to be a difficult task for us, Well, that's none other than the Colorado Avalanche, and this team's had Edmonton's numbers so far. But it looks like Edmonton's finally ready to change things up as we're headed to overtime in game one, and I'm ready to help this team get revenge on Colorado. Seven minutes into overtime, I'm going to be playing some great defense, poking the puck away from multiple defenders, but thankfully the CPU is not going to play any defense whatsoever, so Gabriel Landeskog is going to be wide open in the slot, and he's going to bury the overtime winner in game one. One. That's the last time I rely on the CPU to do anything right. And after that game one loss, things just kept getting worse for the Edmonton Oilers, and now we're down 3-0 in the series. But I don't even think I could save this team, but I'm still going to try. With two minutes left in the third period, Connor McDavid is going to be showing off his wheels before he goes into a back skate move. He's getting a backhander off before Dylan Holloway tries to bat the puck into the net, but it's ringing off the post. And speaking of shots that are ringing right off the post, Rantanen's going on the attack and he's going to rip one right off the bar. I'm going to keep it a thousand. Carter Hart does great when I'm simulating games. The second I have to play any of these games, bro's letting shots past him left and right. In the final seconds, the Oilers are going to get one more great chance, but it's going to ring right off the post. CRA no, we're headed to overtime. And just one minute into overtime, Leon Dreisau is going to be our hero. He's going to try to go short side, but he's immediately going to retrieve his own rebound, wrapping around the net. He's beat the goaltender and we're surviving another day. And it looks like the Oilers are building on that momentum because they're picking have seven goals in game five and they're making this a competitive series we're headed to overtime in game six are we actually going to come back from a 3-0 deficit so nothing significant is going to be happening here but i just want to show this this is peak nhl 23 right here the goalie's doing everything in his power to save this puck like literally everything on the ensuing power play, the puck's gonna go wide of the net, so McDavid's gonna get himself free in the slot. He's gonna receive the pass from behind him, rip it past the goaltender, and we're off to game seven. And then this is what's happening in game seven. We're losing 10 to two. Imagine getting all the way to game seven after fighting back from a 3-0 deficit, only to get blown out in game seven, 10 to two. Everything you just accomplished in the postseason is now void. We would see ourselves a Stanley Cup rematch as the Buffalo Sabres are taking the Avs down in five games, but really, 10 to two? Nah, that's just ridiculous. It was still a successful postseason for McDavid as he's picking up 10 goals and 15 assists for 25 points, while Nathan McKinnon's leading all postseason scores with 36 points. Rumor has it 9 of his postseason points came from that one game 7. I can't confirm nor deny those statistics. 
In the re-sign phase, it's important I bring back some of the guys I traded for. So Boucher, a five-year deal at 4.65 million, and Negrin, 6.6 .6 million per year for the next two seasons. I gotta start thinking more about the future of this team, so Nugent Hopkins and Broberg, I'm sending you over to the Detroit Red Wings for Lucas Raymond. The Nuge has one more year left on his deal, and he's like 35 at this point, so I think this is an absolute steal for us. The other move I'm making is sending two of the guys that literally are just sitting on our bench, along with a prospect and a third rounder, over to the LA Kings for Mikey Anderson, a good defensive defenseman for us. So looking at our forward core, it's good to see that the CPU didn't make any stupid decisions. Too bad it's a similar situation to last season. 35-year-old Dougie Hamilton, $9 million per year for the next two years. Welcome to the team. Why would I ever trust this game to make a competent decision? Why are we committing $9 million to a 35-year-old? He's like an 85 right now. He'll be an 80 overall next season. Thankfully, we're only a few years away before I can fully take over, because it's going to take a lot of work to save this team. Also, our second overall pick from like two years ago still isn't on the team yet. Nope, the coach believes that he's not good enough. Even though he's an 82 overall, he could probably play on the third line, maybe even the second. But I guess we're not going to worry about that. Finally, Edmonton's not going to be a complete dumpster fire, as they're having the best season since this video started. 48, 31, and 3, third in the Pacific Division, and eighth in the entire league. Maybe we can actually compete now. On top of this team having their best season, so is McDavid, as he's picking up 38 goals and 76 assists for 114 points. Moving on over to the postseason, we got our first round matchup being the San Jose Sharks. In game 3, the series is currently tied up 1-1, and so is this game, so we're going to need a bit of overtime. And like some of our previous overtime games, it's not going to take too long to find a winner, as Tomas Hurl is going to be able to break away from a defenseman, and he's going to be able to beat Carter Hart. But this goal seemed kind of weird to me. EA, please fix this, because why is a goaltender trying to stop a shot like this? Why would he turn his body to open up the entire net to the player shooting? There is zero chance he can make a save in this position. Oh yeah, now we're down 3-1 in the series and there's 8 minutes left in the third period. So I have to single-handedly save this season for the team. So with 6 minutes left in the game, this is the exact moment that I knew McDavid's probably never going to win a Stanley Cup. San Jose's going to score here to extend their lead. But Mikey Anderson, what was this attempt at a body check? You moved away from the opposition. There's no excuses for that. In the final 2 minutes, I basically gave up on playing defense because I just need to score a goal here. So I was playing risky. And San Jose, they're going to be scoring one more goal because why would Carter Hart ever make a save? I guess the lone positive from this season is Buffalo winning the Stanley Cup. So that means Tage Thompson now has 3 cups. Besides that, this season was a complete failure. McDavid had 2 points. Connor McDavid had two points. This dude had less goals than Joel Edmondson. Nah, moving on. In the re-sign phase, I'm going to bring back Hyman on a three-year deal worth 2.3 million. He's a decent depth forward for us, and honestly, if we get rid of him, I already know the CPU is going to make a terrible decision. And the other extension is going to be to Lucas Raymond on a six-year deal worth 8.4 million. Now that we're in the offseason, I got to make some moves to bulk this team up. So one of our prospects, along with Pesci, a second rounder, and the guy we just extended is going to be sent over to the New Jersey Devils for Nemec. And then Kanishov is going to be brought in on a four-year deal worth 5.7 million per season. One of the other moves I'm making is sending a third and a seventh rounder over to the Buffalo Sabres, along with a prospect for Kulich, and supposedly I made three trades. I don't recall making three trades, but I guess I did. Morgan, a fourth, and a sixth rounders off to the Buffalo Savers for Kravitzaw. So to my surprise, the CPU made a smart decision. They signed Joel Faraby. I have absolutely no issue with that signing whatsoever. Our forward core actually looks really good now, so maybe we can actually compete for a Stanley Cup. Psych, 43-31-8, and eight, third in the Pacific Division, and 13th in the entire league. We're still mid. Incredibly mid. McDavid still continues to do his thing, though. 41 goals and 71 helpers for 112 points, and in the postseason we have a battle of Alberta as we gotta take on the Calgary Flames. So it looks like I already gotta save this Edmonton team in game one because we're headed to overtime in game one. Early into overtime Dunham has the puck and he's bringing it into the offensive zone. He's gonna be able to dodge a check and when the other guy comes he's gonna poke check to wait so he's able to dodge him too. Then he's gonna cut towards the front of the net find the wide open man and Lucas Raymond he's gonna bury this one and Edmonton's taking game one. Oilers and Flames would be exchanging games over the next two so now we're entering game four with a 2-1 series lead and we gotta head back to overtime in a 5-5 tie. Two minutes into overtime Huberto's gonna do a nice job avoiding the check as he drives towards the front of the net. He's going to send a pass over to Lindholm, but thankfully Carter Hart's going to deflect the puck right off Lindholm so it goes in the back of the net. Lindholm doesn't even have to shoot to score this goal. No, like seriously, just cover this puck up. Why are you trying to clear it from in front of the net? Lindholm literally skates headfirst into the post and still scores this goal. That's a tough look. And right after that game, everything's falling apart for the Edmonton Oilers as Calgary's going to cruise for the rest of the series and they're taking us down four games to two. At this point, I'm convinced that Edmonton's never winning a Stanley Cup. I think our only chance was that Columbus series. And we got screwed. But McDavid, I'm taking back what I just said. You're winning a Stanley Cup because we're in year eight now. And I have full control of this team. The drafting, the coaches we hire, the players we sign, the trades we make. I'm doing all of it now. I'm building us a super team. And we're already seeing a difference because with my first selection, I'm drafting someone with low elite potential. For the past eight years, we haven't drafted one player with elite potential. I drafted someone with elite potential with my very first pick. Things are about to change in Edmonton. The next order of business is bringing Dunham back to the team. And this isn't really going to be up for debate. Seven years at $11 million. 
Greg's also being brought back on a six year deal worth $7 million, but now we have to make a very difficult decision. And that decision involves 34 year old Leon Dreisaitl. So hear me out. Leon Dreisaitl along with a prospect and a fourth round pick over to the Arizona Coyotes for Jarvis Barlow and two first round picks. It has to happen. We got to clear up cap space. We have to improve the defense. We need more center depth. We're picking up two first round picks. So ideally Arizona sucks for the next two seasons, but we have to improve this team and we got to do it fast. But I don't think Barlow is going to be a part of that rebuild because this dude wants $11 million and we have 800k in cap space. So I will be trading you at some point. And some point is right now as you, Fair being a second round picker, being sent over to the Nashville Predators for sale in a first round pick. And we're not done there because I'm still making moves with the Arizona Coyotes as Nemec's going to be sent over to the Coyotes for DeMarchi. They have a similar cap hit, but DeMarchi's under contract for the next three seasons and that's better than Nemec's one. And to finish out the moves for this season, Mikey Anderson along with a fifth round pick is going to be sent over to the Chicago Blackhawks for Willander. With all the signings and trades I made, I feel like our team's in a much better position. Our defense has been improved. We have much better forward depth. Carter Hart just needs to hold it down in between the pipes. And I feel like over the past two years, that's been one of our biggest issues. The Oilers are going to be having a better season, finishing with a 46-31-5 record, second in the Pacific Division while they're ninth in the entire league. Connor McDavid is looking pretty solid himself, picked up 115 points, consisting of 47 goals and 68 assists. And the campaign McDavid had is actually better than we think, because he's going to be finishing second in the entire league with points. Keep up the great work, my guy. You're the only positive spot on this team. With us making the postseason, of course, we're going to have a tough matchup once again, as we got to take on the Vancouver Canucks. But it turns out the Vancouver Canucks are actually a bunch of frauds, as we're going to be sweeping them in the first round. Didn't see that one coming. Heading into the second round, I'm assuming this is going to be a tougher task for us as now we have to take on the Nashville Predators. Entering game four, we're already down 2-1 in this series and now we're trailing 4-2 after 40 minutes. So I'm going to jump into this game and hopefully get us back into this series. And how am I doing that? Well, it's obviously not allowing a goal eight minutes into the third period because why would I ever do that? No, but real talk, Joel Holfer, that St. Louis prospect in between the pipes, that dude was just holding it down the entire game. But eventually we're beating him with a backhanded shot with four minutes left in the period. But I just don't think there's enough time for us to get back into this game. And with basically no time left in this game, I have to play near nearly perfect. So what's the first thing I do? Pick up a two minute penalty for elbowing. Yeah, we're cooked. And on the ensuing power play, it's not too difficult for Nashville to beat Carter Hart, so they're going to be taking this game 6-3. to three. But in the very next game, with Edmonton down 3-1 in the series, what's the most logical thing for me to do? Obviously, let the CPU control it, because they have a better chance at winning than I do, right? Yeah, that's not how we do things around here. And early into overtime, McDavid's going to sauce the puck over to Dunham. He's going to bury it in the back of the net, and we're stealing this game away from Nashville. And it looks like that goal from Dunham was able to spark something, because we're going to be stealing game 6 away, and we're off to game 7. And in game 7, the Edmonton Oilers are making the incredible comeback, 3 unanswered including two in the third period and the Oilers are now off to the conference finals and who are we taking on the conference finals the Arizona Coyotes we made a trade with this team earlier that trade involved Leon Dreisaitl this move is going to age very poorly isn't it so we're already down 2-0 in the series and we're headed to overtime in game three ain't no way Leon Dreisaitl is about to win a Stanley Cup with the Arizona Coyotes of all teams but you know who's better than Leon Dreisaitl Dunham as this man's going to go coast to coast weaving in between defenders he's beating the goaltender and Edmonton's back into this series but in game four Arizona is going to completely dominate. So here we are in game five, down 3 1 in the series. We're down 3 1 heading into the third period. This is going to be an incredibly difficult comeback for us. So I don't know what makes this worse. Leon Dreisel scoring a goal here, or the goaltender being Philip Gustafson, the guy I traded away, in order to keep Carter Hart. Like, I'm doing absolutely everything in my power to score, but Philip Gustafson has become God. But with 25 seconds left in the game, I'm finally able to score a goal in the third period, as Dylan Hallway's making this a two-goal game. But there's 25 seconds left, there's no chance we get back into this game. But I might have spoke too soon, because off the ensuing faceoff, Wyatt Johnson's going to pick up the puck in the neutral zone. He's going to break in between both defenders, and he's beating Philip Gustafson. It's now a one-goal game with 21 seconds left. But when push came to shove, there was no way we were making a three goal comeback with only 25 seconds left in the game, and we're falling to the Arizona Coyotes in the conference finals. But what makes this even worse is Philip Gustafson and Leon Dreisaitl are now Stanley Cup champions. Dreisaitl, I'm happy for you. You got a Stanley Cup. Philip Gustafson, on the other hand, I mean, I got nothing against you. It was our GM that made the signing, but there's a bit of ill will there. I think what makes this postseason even more difficult to process is McDavid had his best one yet 10 goals and 16 assists for 26 points in 16 games. This was our year to win, and we folded. Meanwhile, Drysdale finished second in postseason scoring with 32 points. But luckily with me having full control of this team now, we're entering the draft and I'm going to make some good selections here. We're going to be drafting a medium elite potential goaltender, a low elite potential defenseman, a low elite potential right winger, and then another low elite potential defenseman. And also, I'm not going to be using my sixth or seventh round pick. I'm going to package that up and send it to the Buffalo Sabres for a third round pick. Because obviously the 189th overall pick and the 221st is the equivalent of a third round pick. So this team's incredibly cap tight right now, so we got to make a bunch of difficult moves. 
and one of them is involving Dylan Holloway along with a second round pick over to the LA Kings for Vlada Tanko. Our next move is sending one of our more expensive defensemen along with a first round pick and a third round pick over to the New York Islanders for a young low elite potential defenseman, Clem Costin and Livingstone. Our next move is going to be packaging up a low elite potential prospect along with three picks over to the Seattle Kraken for Fortin. Fortin is then going to be extended to a two year deal worth $3.3 million. Looking at our forward core right now, I have no issues with this team. Our top six looks amazing. Our third line is looking great. Although our fourth line is a bit weak, I think we can work with what we got. Our defense, on the other hand, I believe to be one of the best in the entire league. Although we have a minus one overall on that third pairing, I think the top two pairings are going to make up for it. And that's exactly what's happening as the Edmonton Oilers are going to be having their best season since this video started. 55, 23, and 4, first in the Pacific Division and first in the entire league. If you give me a few years to rebuild the team, we're going to be at the top of the league in no time. McDavid is going to be looking fantastic this season, picking up 52 goals and 62 helpers for 114 points. Well, Carter Hart, the best season of his career. Based on the past three years, I would have never expected these numbers from Hart. 45 wins with a 906 and a 291? Nah, this is our year. We have to win the Stanley Cup this season. Carter Hart's never played this good. We finally have an actual chance. But as we know, this team is pretty consistent in folding in the playoffs, so the Seattle Kraken are definitely going to be a difficult task for us. So we're already down 1-0 in the series, because why would that surprise anyone? So I gotta jump in and try to even this series up. Late in overtime, Duda's got the puck and he's going for a little skate, deking between multiple defenders before we're getting all the way to the front of the net where he's ripping a backhand past the goaltender and Edmonton's evened up this series. And that overtime goal is able to spark some momentum and the Edmonton Oilers are going to cruise to the second round, taking the Seattle Kraken down in six games. Moving on to the second round, we're taking on one of the teams we took down last year in the playoffs and that's the Vancouver Canucks. So I'm not jumping into this game, but I just wanted to show it. What a fantastic masterclass between these two goalies, allowing only 18 goals in one game. If you really think about it, allowing 18 goals in one game is actually pretty impressive. Not good impressive, but impressive. Although Edmonton's picking up a big win in game three, we're still down 2-1 in the series, but Vancouver's looking to extend that lead with a 4-2 lead halfway through the third period. And just moments after jumping into this game, Vlad Tanko is going to work. A nice little spin was getting him past the defender. He's going to be checked, but he's going to quickly regain control of the puck before putting it in the back of the net and making this a one goal game. Late in the third period, Edmonton's making one last push and I gotta give a massive shout to Gundler. He's getting absolutely rocked, but he put his body on the line and you know what happened after that? Dunham's gonna go on to score a goal. He's evening this game up and we're heading into overtime. With a minute left in overtime, this game's been going back and forth the entire way. Demarchi's bringing the puck to the offense zone. He's gonna drive right towards the front net before getting a backhander off, which the goaltender's saving. But bro, what was this backhand? The defenseman's not poke checking this puck away from you. You literally just threw it off the defenseman. If you went for a simple backhand here, you'd probably beaten the goaltender. And what's gonna happen right after after that, Vancouver's going to skate the length of the ice, take a slap shot. It's going to deflect off two Edmonton Oilers players before going into the back of the net. Yeah, I'm not stepping into any games for the rest of this series. But somehow after being down 3-1 in the series, Edmonton's going to fight all the way back. They forced game seven, and now we need overtime for game seven. And I made a commitment to this Edmonton Oilers team. You know what that was? I'm not stepping into any more games for the rest of this series. But that's working out pretty well for us, as Duda's going to be scoring the series winner one minute into overtime, and we're off to the conference finals. But who do we have in the conference finals? Our toughest task yet. A team that has constantly dominated the Edmonton Oilers throughout this entire video. The Colorado Avalanche. I don't know why this Avalanche team is this good, but they are. And now we're about to take them down. As long as I don't have to play any of the games, because if I have to step in, we're cooked. So either the Edmonton Oilers are built different now, or the Colorado Avalanche are complete frauds, as we now have a 3-0 lead in the series. Ain't no way we're going to blow a 3-0 lead, right? Well, things aren't going to go well in Game 4, as Livingstone's going to get stuck behind the net. He's not going to be able to get back into this play, so Colorado's taking this one away with a goal from Huberdeau. But in Game 5, Edmonton's overcoming all the odds. They're defeating the Colorado Avalanche in five games, and here we are, the Stanley Cup Final. It's been a handful of years since Edmonton was in this position, but we're looking for a different outcome this time around. Currently, things are looking pretty good for the Edmonton Oilers. We're up 2-1 in the series, but we're down down 2-1 halfway through the third period and I don't want this series to get evened up I want to take a 3-1 lead with four minutes left in the third period Dunham's going to collect the puck in the corner and he's going to send it over to Demarchi Demarchi's team one up but Connor McDavid's going to get an incredible deflection in front of the net he's going to put it in the back of the net and we're now all evened up at two goals apiece and on the ensuing faceoff I don't even know what's going on here but we're now taking a 3-2 lead in the game because this puck's ending up in the back of the net I don't know how it ended up in the back of the net but it did and also Leon Drysdale's on the Tampa Bay Lightning that's very interesting and in the final seconds of the third period it looks like Lucas Raymond's going to be able to finish this one off with an empty netter and then Edmonton Oilers is going to be taking this one 4-2. Or I thought it was going to be 4-2 because Connor McDavid why not pick up another one a couple seconds later and we're taking this one 5-2. After taking a 3-1 lead in the series, Edmonton's not looking back after that one. We have a 4-1 lead heading into the final seconds of this game and it looks like the Edmonton Oilers are finally going to be able to get rid of their demons and they're taking home the Stanley Cup. Connor McDavid's finally won a Stanley Cup and of course he's going to be the guy leading the way for us. Three goals and seven assists for 10 points. I really don't understand how the stats get so screwed up here but it just doesn't matter. Connor McDavid's now a Stanley Cup champion. He's finally getting a chance to hoist the cup. You'll love to see it. 
But now we have a real challenge in front of us, and that's can this team get back here and repeat next season? Because we have to defend the cup. It's ours now. McDavid was unstoppable in the postseason as he's going to lead the way, picking up 15 goals and 23 helpers for 38 points. So remember that trade a few years ago where we sent Leon Draisaitl to the Arizona Coyotes and then he went on to win a Stanley Cup? Well, one of those first round picks we acquired in that trade is now the fourth overall. I'm starting to think we came out ahead in this deal. With the three picks that we had in the draft, it's no surprise that our best prospect is going to be coming with the fourth overall pick as we're getting a medium elite sniper. Heading into the offseason, there's a handful of moves that had to be made and the first one's going to be bringing Connor McDavid back on a one-year deal worth 11.5 million. Demarchi is also returning on a three-year deal worth 7.2 million, while Travis Konecki is going to be brought in on a one-year deal. Over the offseason, we lost our best offensive defenseman, Evan Bouchard, so I'm going to package up two prospects along with a first and a fifth round pick over to the Columbus Blue Jackets for Boquist. And the moves aren't done there because I'm going to package up Reed along with a sixth round pick over to the St. Louis Blues for Kang. Heading into next season, I've noticed McDavid start to decline. At 35 years old, he's dropped to a 96 overall and he only has elite potential now. Once he drops below a 90 overall, the CPU is taking over for the rest of his career, so we only have about two more seasons to win this man another Stanley Cup. At the end of the year, the Edmonton Oilers are going to be looking fantastic once again, but we're second in the Pacific Division with a 53-25-4 record, and we're also second in the entire league. That Vegas Golden Knights team is just built a bit different. But somehow, at 36 years old, it doesn't even make sense what McDavid's doing. 61 goals, 77 helpers, 138 points, he's leading the entire league. Bro's 36 and put up these numbers. He might never drop below a 90 overall, I might be playing for the next hour. Heading into the post season, Edmonton still got Connor McDavid on the team, so they're still looking to make noise, and they got the Seattle Kraken in the first round. But with an aging McDavid, things aren't looking too great for the Edmonton Oilers, as we're heading into Game 4 down 2-1 in the series, and right now we have a tie game with 5 minutes left. So with 2 minutes left in the third period, everything was going Edmonton's way, this team was absolutely rolling, but we just couldn't beat this goalie. And then he made this save. Like, there is no way that he should be bailing his team out like this. We should have this game in the bag right now. And literally a minute after making that save, this is the goal he allows. You're kidding, right? With time winding down the third period, I just want this game to be over with, so we're being aggressive here trying to play the puck. I'm going to try to clear it from our zone, but thankfully, our defenseman is going to send an absolute dot over to Ricard Raquel. Our defenseman is getting lit up, and then that's right onto the stick of Ricard Raquel. Like, that's an absolutely perfect pass. And then to make this series even worse for us, off the ensuing faceoff, Columbus is going to go right to work, and they're going to score the overtime winner. Literally 30 seconds into OT. That's tough, not going to lie. But after falling to a 3 1 deficit in the series, the Edmonton Oilers just have a bit more dog in them than the Seattle Kraken, as they're going to be winning the next three games, and we're taking this in a seven game series. Like, respectfully, there's no reason we should beat the Seattle Kraken. But here we are in the second round. We got the Vancouver Canucks now, so there's no looking back. Things are looking pretty solid in the second round so far. We have a 2-1 lead in the series, and now we're headed to overtime in game four. Yeah, so I don't really have anything to say about this goal. It happened. We're just going to move on from it because Jesse Pugliari is potting the OT winner and the CPU made me look like an absolute fool. But I don't really care about the CPU because we currently have a 3-2 lead in the series and I'm looking to close this one out in game six. But that's not exactly what's happening because three minutes into overtime, some nice pass from the Vancouver Canucks is going to find Kako and he's going to end this game and we're headed to game seven. Yeah, so it's safe to say things aren't looking too good. But currently there is one trend with the Edmonton Oilers and that's if I jump into a game, the CPU is going to have my back and they're going to win the next one. And that's exactly what's happening in game seven. But also shout out to Ronald Dunham. He carried the way with a hat trick. You'll love to see it. Moving on to the conference finals, we're going to have a tough match because we're going to have to take on the Chicago Blackhawks. So things aren't looking too great for the Edmonton Oilers as we're currently heading into game four down 2-1 in the series. And now we got ourselves a 3-3 tie after 60 minutes. So it's time for us to lock in and pick up the OT winner. And with us having to face off in the offensive zone, you already know I'm busting out the playbook. I'm sending a puck towards Nez. Connor McDavid's going to pick up the rebound. He's burying the OT winner. And now we've got a bit of momentum. And that momentum is going to continue over the next two games as the Oilers are going to cruise to a 4-2 series win. So here we are for the second year in a row back in the Stanley Cup final. We have the Tampa Bay Lightning once again. They're looking to get their revenge while Connor McDavid's looking to hoist back back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. Yeah, so I just wanted to point out game two of the series. We just lost nine to four. Carter Hart might be cooked, not gonna lie. Heading into an incredibly important game four, Tampa currently has a 2-1 lead in the series, and now they have a 4-2 lead heading into the third period, so we gotta make a quick comeback. The third period is not going to go too well for us as Tampa is going to continue their offense as Sergeyev is going to pick up the goal to give them a 5-2 lead. In the third period, the Edmonton Oilers would have so many great chances, but this team just couldn't buy a goal. Valentenko is going to pick up the puck in the offensive zone. He's got himself a bit of a breakaway, but on a backhanded move, he's going to be shooting it wide of the net. If this dude puts the puck on net, that's a goal. But instead, he's shooting it wide. You hate to see it, you really do. But four minutes after that, Travis Konecki is picking up the puck along the boards. He's going to skate along the top of the circle before finding O'Donnell, who's going to put this one in the back of the net, and he's making this a two-goal game. But with this 
CPU taking two crucial penalties in the final minute, it's going to be too difficult for Edmonton to get back into this game as Tampa's taking it 6-3. to three. And when things were all said and done, the Tampa Bay Lightning would just have the Edmonton Oilers number in this series and they're going to be hoisting the Stanley Cup in five games. This was a tough series for the boys, but what makes it a bit worse is this was probably McDavid's last chance. And with the numbers he put up over the postseason, I'm just sorry we couldn't get this man a Stanley Cup. 18 goals, 18 assists, 36 points in 25 games. I'm sorry, McDavid. I failed you. In the upcoming draft, we're only having one selection, but with that selection, I'm going to be drafting a low elite right winger. With the other three picks we did have, I packaged up a seventh and a sixth rounder over to the Arizona Coyotes for a third, and then we're going to be sending our seventh round pick over to the Philadelphia Flyers for a future seventh. Now that we've reached the offseason, it's time to make a handful of difficult decisions. Vlada Tanko, of course, I'm going to bring you back on a seven year deal worth 11.3 million. Johnny Hockey, I'm bringing you in on a one year deal worth 4.8 million. Martins, I'm going to bring you back on a four year deal worth 6.2 million. And then Lucas Raymond, you've done phenomenal things for this franchise. But I just don't have the cap space for you anymore, so I'm going to send you over to the Minnesota Wild for Colborne. But with some of that cap space I just freed up, I'm going to package up Fortin along with a first round pick over to the Vegas Golden Knights for Weirkoch. And then O'Donnell, I'm going to give you a five year extension at 3.8 million. So here we are in what's possibly the final season I'm going to be able to control for Connor McDavid. He's dropped to a 94 overall, but luckily the forward core is still looking fantastic. The defense might have taken a bit of a hit on that right side, but we're getting a plus two overall boost on that third pairing, so I think we're still looking okay. My biggest concern is Carter Hart. He's dropped to an 83 overall. I need you to return to your prime for just one more season. That's all I'm asking for. Edmonton's going to be taking a slight step back this season as they're finishing with a 47-33-2 and record, third in the Pacific Division, and 10th in the entire league. So it's no surprise McDavid declining is definitely having an impact on this team, but he's still putting up fantastic numbers of 41 goals and 61 helpers for 102 points and in the postseason we have ourselves a division rival in the vegas golden knights before we get to this series though i gotta give mcdavid his bag so two more years at 10.4 million so we currently have a 3-1 lead in the series but we're down 3-1 in game four and i don't want mcdavid to play any unnecessary games so i'm just gonna win this one for us because why not okay i better take that back because there's 50 seconds left in the game and we're down by two goals so i don't think we're gonna get back into this one but we are gonna be scoring a late goal here so maybe we can make a comeback i just highly doubt it okay hold on y'all gotta let me cook here because just five seconds later Jarvis is going to drive straight to the net. He's going to beat the goaltender, and we've tied this game up with 30 seconds left in the game. And then 10 seconds after the Jarvis goal, Kang's going to spring away from the defenseman. He's got himself a breakaway. He's beaten the goaltender, and we're going to defeat the Vegas Golden Knights, scoring three goals in 30 seconds. No, that was a wild collapse from this Vegas team. But I'll take it, and we're off to the second round. And in the second round, we got to take on another division rival in the Anaheim Ducks. After dropping game one, we're headed into overtime in game two in a 3-3 tie. Edmonton and Anaheim would be going back and forth the entire first overtime, but we're not going to be able to solve it after 20 minutes, so we got to go to double OT. Just four minutes into double overtime, Demarchi's going to find a way to keep the puck in the zone, and then he's going to find Weirkoch. He's quickly weaving in between two defenders before getting a quick shot off, and he's evened up this series. But after evening the series at one game apiece, Anaheim's going to be picking up the next two, and now we're in game five with a 3-1 lead heading into the third period. So I'm assuming the CPU's got this one, right? Yeah, that was a very bad decision from me. And what's possibly McDavid's final postseason I can control, I decided to send the third period in an elimination game and we're falling 4-3. to three. I'm so sorry, McDavid, I let you down. This is my fault. Now, like, I genuinely feel bad because I let McDavid down. Also, we lost in six games, I just realized that. But it doesn't matter. An L is an L. It was a noticeable decline from McDavid in the postseason, only averaging a point a game. We shouldn't really be expecting more than a point a game from McDavid, though. He's 37 at this point. Age is just catching up to him. And at 37 years old, he's officially dropped to an 89 overall, so that means the CPU is going to be taking over for the rest of McDavid's career. Although McDavid's dropped out of the 90 overall club, Edmonton's still having an okay season, finishing 11th in the entire league. Well, McDavid, he's going to be cracking the 100 point mark once again, picking up 101 points. But in the postseason, they're going to be no match for the Dallas Stars as they're falling in five games in the first round. At 38 years old, McDavid still wants to play in the NHL, so he's going to come back for another season as an 86 overall. But the Edmonton Oilers are going to be completely falling off a cliff this season, dropping to 20th in the entire league, and they're not going to be making the playoffs. Well, McDavid, I never thought I would see the day. 81 points in 82 games, below a point a game? Nah, the falloffs come real quick for you, my guy. Meanwhile, in the postseason, the Carolina Hurricanes are going to be taking down the San Jose Sharks in six games. Games. McDavid refuses to retire, so at 39 years old, he's ready to run it back once again with the Edmonton Oilers, but now he's dropped all the way to the third line. But it looks like Edmonton's going to succeed with McDavid on the third line as they're finishing eighth in the entire league with a 47 30 and 5 record. While although McDavid continues to decline, he's still going to put up some impressive numbers at 35 goals and 38 assists for 73 points. And in the postseason, McDavid's Oilers would actually be able to go on a bit of a run here, making it all the way to the conference finals, but they're going to be swept by the eventual Stanley Cup champion Winnipeg Jets. At this point, I haven't figured out why McDavid hasn't retired because he's an 81 overall at 40 years old. Like, bro, just pack it in. 
I know you love the game, but eventually you just got to call it quits. Although Edmonton was very average this season with a 42, 37, and 3 record, they're actually finishing 21st in the entire league. The NHL's finally got a ton of parody. You'll love to see it. But McDavid, nah, this ain't it. 57 points? Please retire. You just have to call it a career. And finally, at 41 years old in the year 2038, McDavid's finally decided it's time to hang up the skates as he's going to be retiring, picking up 925 goals, 1,404 assists for 2,329 points. So this is probably the longest video I've ever uploaded on my channel. We're probably borderline an hour at this point. So if you've somehow watched this entire video and made it all the way to the end of McDavid's career, comment Krug because the Blues are trying to trade Tory Krug to Philly, but he doesn't want to go there. But anyways, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you want to see more videos like this, comment down below which player do you want to see because if this video does well, I'll definitely make another.